On the second Sunday of our Christmas season, our lectionary offers to us familiar words from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Listen to God's Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, as his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a parent's only son, full of grace and truth. See, John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. But from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made God known. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, you draw near to us. Through your word that became flesh and dwelt among us, your love has come to us. Your light has come to us. Your life has come to us. Draw near to us now. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God. For you, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So my son and I have been playing a new version of the old game Hide and Go Seek lately. It's been a little too cold and too wet to be outside very much. And my son found a little battery-operated candle that was left over from an old craft at daycare. So we lit the candle and turned off all the lights in the house. And we took turns hiding the candle. And the other would find it. Now, as you might expect, this game got easier as it got darker outside. As the sun went down, it was harder to spot the toy cars on the floor or the corners of the dining room table. But the glow of that little candlelight got easier and easier to see, even when it was hidden between books on a bookshelf or under a step stool in the bathroom or on the seat of a chair under that said pointy-cornered dining room table. And so we noticed. We noticed together that the darkness made the light easier and easier to spot, even though the glow of that candle was very dim. I wish I could say that the same was true about real life. It's sometimes true, but I wish that every dark cloud made the sun's shine more immediately evident. Or I wish that every experience of suffering magnified the goodness in the world. 
Now, bright spots sometimes show up in difficult times, but they are not always easy to see, especially in the moment. Now, as Pastor Patrice shared in her prayer earlier, 2020 grew, drew to a close just a few days ago. I don't have to say what we all know is true. 2020 was tough. The pandemic, politics, racial divides, not to mention the ins and outs of day-to-day -day life, navigating virtual school, virtual work, virtual grocery shopping. And then the things that just happen, flat tires, broken pipes, canceled vacation plans, and even postponed weddings. 2020 was hard. Facebook memes show personalized emojis shoving 2020 out of the way, while others say, step lightly into 2021, folks. Don't disturb any sleeping beasts. Now, another meme reminded 2021 that it just has one job to do, and it should not be a hard job. 2021 just has to be better than 2020. It shouldn't take much, should it? Yet, even as they say that hindsight is 2020, looking back on the year that just closed, we can see some light in dark places of a difficult year. I had an intention of sitting with my family and writing a list of all that we were grateful for in 2020. Now, this was a list I had hoped to complete on New Year's Eve, but frankly, I was too cranky. I was having a rough day, and I knew that my grouchiness was going to get in the way of doing this list justice so it's a list that I'm still writing. It's a list that my husband and son are offering input on as we give thanks for those bright spots in a difficult year. These are lists of things for which I am grateful in 2021, where that light broke in. And it includes things like neighbors. Neighbors who put old cars on our front porch for my son to play with. Neighbors who turned on sprinklers so high they would go over fences or shoveled our walk on Christmas morning. I give thanks for things like Zoom. I give thanks for a birthday that was special even though it was different. I give thanks for sidewalk chalk and all its expressions. I give thanks for the helpers, for frontline workers and hospitals and grocery stores and bus stations. I give thanks that I found out about Midnight Cookies and Cream, a milkshake at the Milkshake Factory. Hopefully, in 2021, you will thank me that you have found out about this milkshake if you didn't already know about it. I give thanks for a hairdresser who was willing to cut and color my hair on my front porch when it was warm enough out. Clearly, it hasn't been warm enough for some time. I give thanks for our coordinator of Children and Youth Ministry, Sarah Hackett for her creativity and her encouragement and inspiration to the rest of us to think outside of the box as we do our ministry together in profound and creative ways. I give thanks for my son's affection, for his ability to now write his own name and make jokes and go on long hikes with me and notice things in the world that I cannot see. I am also deeply grateful that 2020 taught us new ways to be together. We now know what it means to hold a drive-by birthday party or a Zoom game night or to live stream worship, to embrace loved ones living in nursing homes through hugging booths. But we have also been pushed to rethink the boundaries of community and the possibilities of connection. We have learned the value of things we once took for granted and the power of seeing another person in the flesh, even if at a distance or through a window wearing a mask. It's not surprising then, as Providence would have it, that the lectionary for the first Sunday of this new year 
is a text that reminds us of a God who continually found new ways to be with us. John opens his gospel with a theology of an immortal God finding new and newer ways to manifest love in the world God has made. See, first God initiated creation as the immortal word who was God and was with God took on the creative force giving life to the universe. Then in the fullness of time, God engaged the world God had made, including the humanity of God's own heart, until Christ, it got, until in Christ God's word took on flesh and dwelt among us. In Christ, light entered all darkness, and no darkness could overcome that light. Now, as we look through the entirety of Scripture, we see also the story of a God who persists in being with God's people. God's commitment to this goal throughout the arc of Scripture is relentless. Over and over and over again, we hear how God's light breaks into the world through rainbows, burning bushes, pillars that guide God's people, glowing faces of prophets and messages, messages illuminated by angels. This God directs God's people through a star over Bethlehem, and this same God will show up through fa flaming tongues of the dawning Holy Spirit. But we remember today that God's light showed up as one of us, when the word took on flesh and dwelt among us. We hear this good news a lot, especially now. The mystery of the incarnation marks our Christmas celebration. God comes wrapped in swaddling cloths, cooing among cattle in a bed of hay. God with us is a source of amazement. As we think about how we are wired to look upon the chubby cheeks of a newborn baby with a sense of awe, and we imagine the fullness of God's love in the soft gaze of a brown-skinned tiny baby whose hands reach to grasp around our fingers. It doesn't get any better than this. And really, it's true. See, God is continually breaking into our midst and drawing near to us, reaching out for us, loving us, and inviting us forth into the love tucked into the deep recesses of our hearts. God is with us. And God with us claims us as God's children too, reminding us that the baby that was born in a manger in Bethlehem is emblematic of our identity as God's beloved children too. See, in Christ, God came to us that we might know grace upon grace. And we carry this good news with us into a new year. For this truth is eternal. But we are reminded that this Good news is not just offered to us to calm our worries, to ease our anxieties, to give us hope. Sure, it does all of that, but this good news comes packed with a call. For see, just as Christ came to us as a baby, as children of God, we are called to carry the light of Christ into the world. We are called to get creative. We are called to push the limits of being with one another so that God's love can take root in our daily lives and God's, root, God's love can reach out into the world around us so that God's love can break into the darkness of our days. As in Christ, God overcame not only the physical distance between God and humanity, but in Christ, 
God overcame those things that push us away from God. Things like sin, things like brokenness, things like even death. And so God's love dwelling within us calls us forth too to overcome more than physical distance, but to overcome all that divides us, to do the hard work of telling the truth about things like prejudice and privilege, to do the hard work of taking things apart, ideologies that have gotten us stuck, stuck in ruts of selfishness, or self-loathing, ideologies that have nurtured hate, ideologies that have pushed us away from our siblings and entrenched us in the mire of polarized politics, of identities that exclude others, of a false sense that some are better than others. We must take apart the systems that harm, the systems that oppress, the systems that divide, even when those systems show up in our own hearts, even when those systems support our own comforts. We are called to learn to illuminate our hearts and our minds, our experiences with the knowledge and love of God and of one another, to learn about others, of those with identities or cultures or, or beliefs that are different from our own. We are called to learn about how to be in the world in new ways that nurture the light and love of God. We are called to step out in faith, (coughs) trusting that the light of God goes before us, even when we are stepping forth in ways that are uncomfortable, difficult, or maybe even risky. (coughs) See, on Christmas Eve, my family gathered around our kitchen table, a kitchen table I shared with you all a few weeks ago in a children's time. Around our makeshift Advent wreath, we had handheld candles that we lit from the Christ candle on our table. We turned off all of the lights in our kitchen and we sang Silent Night. My son is now old enough to hold his own candle, even though there are some drops of wax that have dripped on our kitchen table that I haven't yet been able to get off. But that's okay. It reminds me that a candle was lit by a three-year-old as we remembered the light of God that had come to us in Christ. As we had a very imperfect Christmas Eve, I was grateful for the holy that broke in through Facebook and YouTube, around kitchen tables, A reminder that in our own imperfection, through our own humility, our ignorance, sometimes even through our best efforts, our biggest fears, the imperfections we try to hide in the dark places of our lives, the light of Christ enters our world. And the light of Christ sometimes even enters the world through us. Around kitchen tables and in Bethlehem mangers, God's love knows no boundaries. God's love, God's light, God's promises enter our midst, whether we recognize God around us or not. We too are children of God, called to love, called to be little sources of a radiant divine light 
offering hope in a broken world. See, this is our good news. It is a good news that was true at the dawn of time, in the beginning, as John reminds us. It is good news that is ours today. The light has come into the world through the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome the light. May we search for this light. May we point to this light. May we shine this light. For God is with us all, always. Thanks be to God. Amen.